My workshop. This is episode four of a six part project on making a hexagonal box with marquetry inlay and veneer work. What I do now is cut these shapes out very carefully and gently. I don't try and do it in one go, I take my time and gradually cut through the fibres. It's a bit like watching grass grow, but here goes. I bet you have a little bit of music to listen to while I'm doing this. In real terms, I think that took me nearly 10 minutes to cut out. Put that to one side, or if you like, you can put it over the portion that you're making. That's part two. Now we've got four pieces and if we put it together, it does sort of look like a leaf, but it lacks a lot of definition. So how we give that definition is we cast shadows as in real life, when this leaf curls over like that, what it'll actually do if the light is coming from this side, it will cast a shadow over the stem. So what we've got to decide is what side you want the light coming from, and then we'll put shadows where the light would cast a shadow. And that will give a real three-dimensional effect. And how we do that is quite simply, get a gas burner. Now this is an old jam tin, I've just cut it off, what's that, about an inch and a half up, and then peened over the inside so it's not uh, dangerous or sharp. And the magic ingredient, no, it's not tomato paste. It's actually white sand. What this is, is the sand you put in the bottom of a budgerigar cage, or if you've got pet birds and you get that white sand for the bottom, or aquariums, it's a very, very fine grain white sand, fill it up as I've done there, and we'll now heat that until the sand gets really, really hot. There's a few other things you'll need if you want to do the scorching technique with marquetry. For me, I like these reverse tweezers that you squeeze to open and they hold nice and tight. And the other thing you need is a spoon. And that's what I hold the hot sand in while I'm scorching timber. I'll know when we're hot enough when this actually starts to scorch. Be very careful, this is very, very hot and you do have to have your wits about you. Now to look at the design we have here, we've got to decide which side the light's going to be coming from. I like the idea of the light coming from this direction. That way, darker pencil, we have the light coming from this direction as this leaf falls over, it's going to leave a shadow on the leaf on the inside and the stem, the main woody part of the leaf, the light will be hitting that and also casting a shadow on this part. So what I have to now burn is in here where this part sits and all the way along this part. To do the larger bits, 
I use a spoon, get a spoonful of hot sand and then just push the piece I want scorched into it. Now you can see there that I just started to scorch the edge. That's what happens. Once you've scorched it, it might look really dark, but when you clean it up and you sand it, you'll lose a lot of that. So I always like to go a little bit deeper than what I want in the finished job. If you can, you get the sand from the bottom and that's going to be hotter. And there we have it. Turn this off. Be very careful of this. It is extremely hot. And do not do what I do and put it down on a plastic mat because it'll melt it. So put it up out of the way where you're not going to touch it and no one else is going to touch it. Now it's time to put it all together. If I was doing a big job, I'd most likely use hide glue, but this is a little job. Put a little bit of glue there. Get some sticky tape. Lay it down on your green mat. Cut it up into little four millimeter squares. Now pick up, just dust the sand off lightly. Be very careful with these delicate edges as well. A little bit of glue on the end of the knife and then just put glue down the edge. Now, sometimes I'll double glue this, and if it's too delicate, I won't risk it. I'll only glue one side of the job, because it's only there to hold it together while the piece dries. Sticky tape. Now, the piece is curled over, bit of glue down the edge, pop that into place, and there we have it. One little leaf, very shortly, will inlay into the box. Now what I'll do, a bit trusty old wrap, pop that there, and put one of these heavy blocks over the top. We've had huge storms here and I can't hear a thing with the rain on the roof. So it's actually the next day and we've still got a bit of rain so that's the background noise. Now I took that um, piece of leaf out from the press and it glued up lovely as you can see. But what I wasn't happy with was the overall shape. So I've sculpted it by taking this piece away here and just round it off any sharp corners. A great way of rounding off is if you have a carving chisel. Now, these are reasonably expensive, but they're absolutely great to have. I do a lot of carving, so obviously I've got a few, but they are terrific for marquetry. This is a, a 516 or a 520, 530. It's got a nice gentle curve there, and it's just what's needed if you've got any sharp edges and you just want to round them off, just pop it on there rockwards, backwards and forwards and it really sculpts the leaf into a nice, more natural shape. Now what I have to do is get some background veneer. I've got a little bit of, um, this is New Guinea yellow walnut, walnut burl. It's interesting when you're looking to put a motif on a background, how important it is to get the contrasting right. For example, if I was to place it there, it sort of gets lost. Likewise, if I was to place it there, it gets way too busy. I quite like this section over here, where I've got a bit of fiddleback coming through, and you'll notice the growth rings actually follow the shape of the leaf. If I was to put it the other way and turn the leaf over, it then is running contrary to the rings behind it. And for me, that's not balance, it's not symmetry. So it's a question of 
playing around, decide which side of the leaf you want up or down, and then finding something that suits you. As I said, I think it was last episode, it's what pleases you. It's not what I do or someone else says you should do. It is what pleases you. And the more you do it, the more you get a feel for balance and what's right, and then you can trust your own judgments. The piece I like is, as I said, this piece here, and I like the leaf going that way. So then I've got a gentle curve of the growth rings going down here, and also the curve of the leaf. So what I do is place it where I want it to go. Get the perspex oval that we copied from the timber oval and place it over the leaf to make sure you've got enough room for the motif and the oval to be cut out where you want to place it. Now what I do, get a pencil, 2B is fine, and lightly draw around that oval. Now get some sticky tape. And with the sticky tape, glue it down over the leaf in the place you want it to be. As you can tell, we use a lot of sticky tape. Now rub it down nice and hard. Then again, with the sharp knife, very gently cut around the outside of the leaf. As before, don't try and go around the whole leaf in one go. Just a little bit at a time. And let the weight of the knife do the cutting. Don't try and force it. And it's important at this stage not to run off with the knife because you can actually cut the veneer and that'll show up when you've actually inlaid it in the box. So we'll just keep on going around here. And where I've cut through, what I will do is get another piece of sticky tape and put it over where I've already cut. That way it's going to keep the leaf nice and hard against my background. Or else you're down to the last little bit of sticky tape and it'll start to wander and your cuts won't be as precise. Now, if it's easy, move the job around so you are always comfortable when you're cutting. There's nothing worse than being here and then having to pull around to get into a tight corner and you feel all scrunched up. So move the job to enable you to be as comfortable as possible and cutting in the most natural position. Check on the back, see how you're going. See there, we've cut all the way through. So where I've just cut, more sticky tape. When you're doing the stem, try not to push sideways because it is, even though it's stuck down, it can move offline a little bit. So I've got my, my finger actually holding it down while I run the knife up it. Okay. Now if you gently just go over that sticky tape you've been putting on, the leaf should come away quite easily. And there you have the hole that the leaf will fit in quite nicely. Now we glue that up the same way as we put it together. A little bit of glue. Take your knife again and then glue around the inside. Now take the motif and gently place it in where you've cut out. Still leave the sticky tape on at this stage. 
and push it down nice and hard so it's at the same level and that's what it looks like. Now normally I leave that in the press and let it dry but it's just stopped raining a little bit so I really want to get this done so I'll push through. Grab your Perspex shape again, place it over the top. It's at this stage you can get a final position on where you want the leaf to look but at the moment that's looking pretty good. So now I just cut around this Perspex shape. Keep your fingers on there. Remove that piece of veneer. Just make sure you haven't got any extra bits hanging over. Get the box lid and orientate the leaf how you want it to go. So once you've positioned the leaf and you're happy with it, now we actually have to inlay that into the top of the box. And again, hold it in position, sticky tape. Careful at this stage, that's when you're getting the first lot on, not to let it move. Before you do this, of course, you remove any sticky tape that's on the underside that you're going to glue down. And that's stuck down nice and hard. You can see from the reflection, the tape is all over it. Getting a trusty knife, and push it, the sticky tape in with your thumbnail because you want it to get right up to the edge. And then gently start cutting. Now the difference with cutting into this is you're actually cutting into the top that has a substrate. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, to knowing actually when you're through. First of all, you cut around the outside of the object. And then when all the sticky tapes cut through, we take that off and we use the cut line that's left as a guide to finish the rest of it. So I'll, I'll show you anyway as we go. Keep as close to the edge of the motif as possible. And if you can, have a very, very slight tilt on the knife. So you're cutting, instead of straight up and down, it's a little bit of a tilt. Don't try and go all the way through in one go. And the same as when you're cutting the leaf out, don't be afraid to move the top to make it more comfortable for you to cut. When you've cut it out, pick this up and it's always a good idea just to put a mark on the top of the box and the back of the logo. Because it's an oval shape, sometimes you can put it in the wrong way around, especially this is six-sided. If it gets moved, it's very hard to figure out. Well, it's not hard, but it's confusing to figure it out. And sometimes you think it's right and you put it in and it's not. And when you actually look at it, you can see it's not lined up properly. So when you've cut all that sticky tape off, pick it up, put a mark on the job and a mark on the back that lines up. And then the track that's left on the inside of the sticky tape, just run your knife around one more time to make sure that you've got it whole. No pressure, just allow the tip of the knife to sit in it and it'll give you a good guide all the way around. And we take all the sticky tape off. Now we have to remove the inside waste within that oval shape. Several ways you can go, you can use a router trimmer with a straight bit or a router. And the way you set your depth on that is get a piece of scrap veneer that is the same as the veneer we used in the box and then set the depth of your tool to the thickness of this piece of veneer. And then take a piece of veneer, place it on the part you've just routed and it should be level. Now it's level, that's set to the right depth. The other way you can go, if you want to do it manually, got a Stanley 71 hand router, 
Well, there's a, a 271, which is a very small router, and you can have a really small hand router, that's the Veritas one. Well, failing that, if you don't have access to any of that, take your knife, hold it nice and firm, and then using your knife, just gradually cut away to that line. This is when you will appreciate hide glue. If you're using PVA, it is an absolute nightmare to get off. Hide glue is a lot different, it comes away a lot easier. And that's one of the main reasons I use hide glue. I was going to use a, an electric router or trimmer to finish this off, but what I might do is I'll just use this hand router for a little bit, apart from the fact it's quiet, but to give you an idea how different tools can do the same job. Now I'll go all electric. As you can see, the electric router is much quicker. But be very careful when you come in, don't take it to the edge. Leave just a little bit on the inside because if your router kicks off, you can go into your job itself, which ruins it. So once I've gone that far, then the rest, you can clean up using a hand router or you can clean up using your knife. And then pick up the motif and just pop it in for a test fit. If you're happy with that, scrub a couple of boards, make sure it all lines up, that cross and that cross. Grab the glue pot and just put a nice foundation of glue down there back a bit of a lick. Make sure at this point there's absolutely no sticky tape on the back. Line it up into the recess. If you've got a veneer hammer just squeeze any excess glue out from behind it and that also helps to put the shoulders of the inlay down into the recess. That's it. Cover it. Now I'll just put that in the clamps and I'll be back. That's the end of this episode. What we'll do next episode, and it's just started to rain so we just got it in on time, is we will flatten the inlay, we'll join it to the box, we'll put some solid edging around it and be on the home straight of finishing the box off. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down on another episode and saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe and in this weather, keep it dry and enjoy your woodwork. <laughs>